Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching this. I'm Chen Zhen, leading discovery at Roblox. And I'm Peter. I lead career analytics here at Roblox. And today, we're very excited to walk you through thumbnail personalization. And here is a quick glance of our today's agenda. First, I will cover the motivation behind the thumbnail personalization, how it works, as well as some early results. And then Peter will walk you through the feature and share best practices. All right, now let's dive into it. You may ask, why do we do thumbnail personalization? Well, the motivation behind this is really twofold. First, we have observed that every different user may have different preference of thumbnail to help them evaluate the recommendations in front of them because they may be attracted to the different specific aspect of the experience to make the decision to engage or not. Take an example, dress to impress. For me, all it takes is some cheap looks on the thumbnail that I'm in. I want to walk down the wrong way. But for my colleagues, they may need to see some beach looks, or for some of them, maybe they want something very classic with a camellia. And then second reason why we think this is very important to personalize is to empower you, our creators, with more agency and tooling so that you can grow your user base and play time by attracting different types of user with the different aspects of your experiences. Now, with that, how does this algorithm work? Since the goal is to really find the best, most relevant thumbnail for each user, we will take a random group of user traffic for each thumbnail and to estimate, based on their behavior and interaction with that thumbnail, the qualified playthrough rate of that thumbnail. Based on that, the algorithm will pick and show the most winning thumbnail for that user group and also keep some small amount of traffic to continue exploration in case the preference or performance of the thumbnail change. And then the whole algorithm is being updated hourly so that we can adapt to changing user preference and platform trends. Now you may also ask, that sounds cool, by way, why did you skip A-B testing? Well, compared to A-B testing, thumbnail personalization can allow you to find multiple winning thumbnails in hours instead of weeks. Secondly, it also allows you to respect the diverse preference of users so that you can tailor to each of them with the most relevant thumbnail instead of attracting to the majority of your user base but have to compromise and lose some of the other ones my cool may not resonate with that winning thumbnail. Last but not least, testing is a one-time deal, but thumbnail personalization can allow you to automatically adapt to changing user preferences and platform trends. Of course, all of the above is our insights, observation, and hypothesis, but we do put them into test. And I'm excited to share through our early tests, we actually seen very exciting, encouraging results overall. On average, those experiences that participate in those tests actually saw 8.5% qualified playthrough lift, with some of them even seeing 50% lift in qualified playthrough rate. We also put this feature into the hands of field creators of all sizes to test it out. And they all told us very excited to see the qualified playthrough rate lifts. And some of them credit this feature to be really, really cool and a game changer. So with these encouraging results, we're now rolling out this feature to the entire creator community so that you can enjoy those benefits. With that, I'm gonna hand it over to Peter to walk you through how thumbnail personalization works. Okay, everyone, so let me show you how you can set up thumbnail personalization. First, navigate to your uh, thumbnails page in your Creator Hub, and you'll see a new homepage tab. 
So now all you have to do is hit edit active thumbnails and then upload your new thumbnails to this page. Okay, so now I see my new thumbnails on this page. And to turn on personalization, all you have to do is to uh, set two to five thumbnails to active. So I'm gonna set all these to active personalization. And then you just have to hit save changes and start to turn on personalization. And there you go, personalization is now on. Uh, in a couple hours, the algorithm will start optimizing your traffic, and you will also start seeing uh, stats on this page. So let's actually look at a game that has personalization turned on already. You can see here that this game is uh, personalizing four thumbnails, and you can see that the thumbnails with the higher qualified playthrough rates are getting more impressions. But you can also see here that the third thumbnail is actually uh, winning with uh, age 18 plus users. So it's still getting impressions, even though it's overall qualified play rate is a little bit lower than the other thumb thumbnails. And if you scroll down, we also show you um, your impressions by thumbnail and your qualified play rate by thumbnail. Now this is really important. You can see here in your impressions chart that um, just because the thumbnail is winning right now doesn't mean it will always be winning. Right, you can see here that the, the blue line was winning before, but now it looks like the green line is winning because user preferences and platform trends change, as Chen mentioned. So it's really important to actually keep multiple thumbnails active to get the most out of thumbnail personalization. And of course, if you do want to make changes, you can always go into edit active thumbnails and then pick the thumbnails that you want to stay active for personalization. Okay, so that's a live demo. Now let's walk through some best practices for personalization as well as for making new thumbnails. So best practice for personalization. Number one best practice is you wanna keep multiple thumbnails active so that the personalization can actually adapt to changing user trends and platform changes. And so when you actually test new thumbnails, well, we think that when you make a new content update or when you have a you know, big event coming, that's a good opportunity to test a new set of thumbnails and restart personalization. All right, so when it comes to making new thumbnails, again, the number one most important thing is to make sure that your thumbnail actually reflects what users expect to play in your experience. You wanna showcase maybe new gameplay or new content. Um, remember, we're optimizing for qualified playthrough rate, which means that users not only have to click your thumbnail and join, but also they have to stick around and do something in your game. Uh, so really try to avoid having clickbait th thumbnails. Um, of course, it's also important to use quality images, high resolution images for your thumbnails. Um, and you might wanna consider testing your thumbnails in your community, getting some quality feedback before you start personalization. Uh, try to keep a consistent theme so that users can recognize your thumbnails, uh, you know, different thumbnails and also different icons. And uh, finally, last but not least, be open to testing and experimenting. Uh, try new perspectives, like for example, a first person behind a wheel view for a driving game could work very, very well. So that's it. Uh, we're super excited to have all of you give this feature a try to grow your game faster and improve your qualified playthrough rate. We will also have a dev forum post about this very feature. Please read it and give us feedback. We're very committed to continue improving our discovery products to connect every user on Roblox with the best creation and community for them, and also to connect every creation with the most relevant audience.